Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about the fluorescence microscope. The fluorescence microscope is a specially modified compound microscope uh, which is furnished with UV radiation source and filters that protects the viewer's eye from the injury by the dangerous rays. Actually, the UV radiation is an important source of the fluorescence microscope, but the dangerous effect by the UV rays uh, in the fluorescent microscope was prevented by the filters uh, which is present in the fluorescent microscope. The name of that filter is called as a barrier filter or emission filter. And the fluorescence microscope was first invented in the early part of the 19th century by the scientist August Kohler, Carl Richard and Heinrich Lehmann. And the most commonly used fluorescence microscope is a epifluorescence microscope, which is also called as a incident light fluorescence microscope or reflected light fluorescence microscope. And in fluorescence uh, microscope, the objective lens can also act as a condenser. Usually uh, the objective lens magnifies the object and the condenser lens contains the light which is emerged from the light source. In the fluorescence microscope, the objective lens can also act as a condenser and the objective lens uh, acts not only as a magnifier from the light emitted by the fluorescing object, but also act as a condenser for the incident light. The fluorescence microscope is used to study the organic and inorganic, and inorganic samples and it also uses the fluorescence dyes to examine the structural organization and the spatial distribution of the samples. Mm -hmm. And next, the fluorescence microscope is used to study the samples that are complex and cannot be examined under the normal light microscopes. And the fluorescence microscope images helps to study the substances uh, which are present in lower concentration where high sensitivity is crucial to detect them. Like some of the fluorescent dyes used to for staining or the acridine orange uh, which fluoresces the orange color. The second one is the fluorochrome aromine O which fluoresces the golden yellow color. The third one is the DAPI that is the diamino deno 2 phenyl indole which fluoresces the green color. The fourth one is the FITZ that is the fluorescein isothiocyanate which fluoresces the green color and finally the TRITC or rhodamine that is the tetramethyl rhodamine isothiocyanate which fluoresces the red color. And this is the uh, image of the fluorescence microscope like an ordinary uh, light microscope, microscope it also contains the light source, condenser, objective lens, uh, eyepiece all the things. But apart from the normal parts, it contains some special parts like uh, mercury arc lamp, the which act as a light source. Second one is the exciter filter or excitation filter. Third one is uh, the dichromatic mirror. Fourth one is the objective lens. The fifth one is the barrier filter or emission filter. And the sixth one is a normal eyepiece. And here, uh, this is the mercury arc lamp light source. And this, from this wire, the UV light pass through the optic fiber. And this part is the exciter filter or excitation filter. And the fourth one is the normal, this is the normal objective lens. And the fifth one is uh, the dichromatic mirror. This is the dichromatic mirror, which is playing a major role in this fluorescent microscope. And the next part is the emission filter, which is also called as the barrier filter. And this is the eyepiece. These are all the common parts of the fluorescence microscope. Now regarding the working principle, and the, the light source is the mercury arc lamp. And it is uh, this mercury arc lamp can able to produce a, a intense beam of light. And, the, and it, the light emitted from the mercury arc lamp is about uh, 10 to 100 times uh, brighter than the normal 
lamps. And the light from the mercury vapor lamp uh, passes through the exciter filter. This is the exciter filter. The light source from the mercury arc lamp will pass through the exciter filter. Then normally the light from the mercury arc lamp is with a long wavelength, but after passing through the exciter filter, the exciter filter removes the long wavelengths and convert the long wavelength light into the short wavelength light. But here the wavelength of the light is long and after passing through this exciter filter, the wavelength of the light becomes short. Okay, and next uh, the light passes through the exciter filter is directly moved down to the microscope by the filter called as the dichromatic mirror. The shorter wavelength lights pass into the dichromatic mirror and this dichromatic mirror reflects the short wavelength light into the fluorochrome coated specimen. Okay, the fluorochrome coated specimen absorbs the shorter wavelength radiation and emits the longer wavelength light. Here, the purple color line shows the shorter wavelength light and the, after reaching the specimen, the shorter wavelength radiation is emitted as a longer wavelength light. Here, the longer wavelength light is mentioned in red color. The longer emitted fluorescent light uh, travel up through the object lens into the microscope through the trichromatic mirror and from the trichromatic mirror the longer wavelength light is transmitted to the barrier filter. This barrier filter is, a, is an important filter in the fluorescent microscope because uh, this barrier filter blocks the ultraviolet radiation uh, which are uh, highly dangerous to our eyes and allows the visible light only. Here through the barrier filter the UV rays are blocked and the longer wavelength light alone passed. Okay so here the dangerous UV light after crossing the barrier filter will becomes non-dangerous normal light. And by using this eyepiece or ocular lens, we can visualize the object of the uh, specimen. That, that is the object of the things which is placed in the specimen. And this is the uh, bacterial cocci under the fluorescence microscope. And this image shows the bacterial rods uh, under the fluorescence microscope. And this image shows the filamentous fungi under the fluorescent microscope. And this image shows the mycorrhizal association of the fungi with the plants under the fluorescence microscope. And this image shows the ciliated protozoa under the fluorescence microscope. And this image shows the protozoa leishmaniasis uh, species under the fluorescence microscope. Uh, regarding the uses of the fluorescence microscope, uh, the fluorescence microscope is an essential tool in the various fields of uh, biology like uh, medical microbiology, microbial ecology, uh, material science and various field of uh, biosciences. And it also helps to identify the cells and sub-microscopic cellular compounds uh, with accuracy and uh, accurate details. The fluorescence microscope is also used for the identification of uh, mycobacterial tuberculosis and the bacillus anthracis. The microbiotic tuberculosis is a causative agent of uh, uh, tuberculosis disease. And under fluorescence microscope, this mycobacterial tuberculosis will appear as, as a brain, bright yellow color cell. And the bacillus anthracis is a causative agent of uh, anthrax disease. And under fluorescence microscope, the bacillus anthracis fluoresces the green color, that is the FITC. Next is the, the fluorescence microscope is also used uh, in the used by the microbiology uh, microbial ecologist 
uh, to visualize the photosynthetic microbes for the observation of the various photosynthetic pigments. And the fluorescence microscope is used to differentiate the live bacteria from the dead bacteria uh, by the color they fluoresce after treatment with the special mixture of the strains. In histochemistry, the fluorescent microscope is used to detect the particles such as the neurotransmitter amines, which cannot be uh, seen by the conventional light microscopes. And in food chemistry, the fluorescent microscope is used to assess the specific food components in uh, food products. In mineral studies, it is used to study the minerals such as the coal and graphene oxide. In paper and textile industries, the fluorescent microscope is used to, to analyze the fiber dimensions. And uh, the, the fluorescent microscope are uh, ideals for the studies of uh, porosity in the ceramics. And the fluorescent microscope is used for imaging the genetic materials like uh, DNA and RNA, which are present within the cell. And it also helps in viewing the specific cells uh, within a large population uh, with the techniques such as the fish that is the fluorescent in situ hybridization. And the fluorescent microscope is a common tool for today's life science research because uh, it allows the use of uh, multicolor staining, uh, labeling of structures within the cells and measurement of the physiological state of a cell. And that's all about the fluorescent microscope. Thank you. Thank you for the support.